see my screen? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, let's start the discussion. So we are going to discuss about real number. In your previous class, you must have, uh, there was a chapter irrational number. Before that, there was a chapter integers. Before that, I believe there was a chapter for whole number. So these are the topic which is already known to you. Today, we are going to start the discussion of real number. Now, what exactly is real number? Real number means when it, we can just uh, divide real number in two parts. One is Rational number, which you already know what is rational number, included in that we will be including irrational numbers also. Now the name, let me write first, real number, we can divide it in two parts, that is rational number and irrational number. Here we we will also discuss what is the rational number which was left in the previous class. Rational number, a chapter was there, right? Right? A chapter was there uh, for the introduction of rational number in the previous class. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes so, real number is the just the combination of rational, irrational, everything. Now, just focus on the name. Here, the name says real number. So, in reality, whatever number exists in this universe, in this world, those are called real numbers. So, real number means what? All the number. Real number means natural number, whole number, integers, rational number, irrational number, prime number, composite number, whatever type of number you know. Everything comes in real number. So, you must be thinking, okay, Everything is real number, whatever number we know, whatever number exists in reality, those are called real number. Is there any number which is not real? Yes, in mathematics, numbers are there which is not real also. Okay? Just a second. So, numbers are there which is not real also. Those discussion like about that, the numbers which are not real, those numbers are called imaginary number. Okay. So, mathematicians have introduced this imaginary number also. Okay. This concept we are not having now, but we'll, we will be having in future. When you will go in higher class. Uh, in class 11, 12, there will be the introduction of imaginary number also. So that's why there is a part which is real number, the number which exists in reality and imaginary is different thing. We will be talking about this imaginary number also, which is not real just after a while. Now, you must have seen this type of Venn diagram, which will help us to understand what is real number, what is rational what is irrational just a moment so there is a venn diagram which will, which will always help us to understand first we are having natural number counting all the counting numbers are natural number right yes or no so natural number starts from and zero. Uh, sorry, is when? Zero? Uh, is it zero? Or counting, just the counting it's number. From one. one, two, three, four. It's from one. It's from one. It just starts from one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are natural numbers, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. Natural number, we know all the counting number starts from one. That is one, two, three, four. All the counting numbers are natural number. Now, whole number. What is whole number? Ma'am, the numbers which start from zero. Whole number. Yes, whole number starts from zero. So, zero. zero 
one, two, three, four. four. All the numbers are whole number. Now here in this diagram, is if I will say that whole number includes natural number, is it making sense to you? Whole number includes natural number. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes exactly. It yes, includes sir. natural number. Whole number in whole number, all the natural number is also there. Okay, that's why this figure. Just focus on this figure. That whole number includes natural number. Yes, it includes natural number. In and we understand the meaning of that. That whole number starts from zero, and natural number are all the counting numbers which starts from one. Now after that, we are having integers. Integers. Now, integer, a fully dedicated chapter was there on an integer and we understand what is integer. Integers are the numbers with positive or negative sign. So, 0, which we, we are representing on the number line also. So, 0, 1, positive 1, positive 2 or negative 1, negative 2, these are the number. The whole number only with positive negative sign, these are called integers. So 1, 2, 3, or we can say negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. These are also integers, right? Now, if I will say yes. that integers include whole number, is it making sense? Yes, includes yes, it yes, includes whole number, yes, right? Integers include natural numbers. Yes, it include natural number also. And what the figure is also this figure is also showing the same thing that integer includes whole number and yes integer also includes natural number okay now after that we are having rational numbers which we have already you have learned in the previous class rational number the number which we can write in the form of p by q okay p by q all the numbers which can be written in the form of p p by q where p is just integers so if i will write p as a, any integer let's say 2 and q as any other integer let's say minus 3 this one is a rational number okay if i will if i am talking Talking about zero, is it a rational number or not? So any number which we can represent in the form of p by q is rational number. So zero, we can write it as zero by one or maybe zero by two or maybe zero by three. So yes, we are able to represent it in the form of p by q and where p and q are integers. But there was a condition also that the denominator q must not be zero. Okay. When we are talking about rational number, it must be in the form of p by q mathematics when you will see the definitions and everything no it will make you confused okay p by q p by q what is p by q p and q are just a number p can be 2 q can be 3 p can be 5 q can be 6 so these are just the number only one condition is there that the denominator should not be zero the denominator value should not be zero okay if we are keeping in mind that then all the fractional number which can be written like this are rational number okay so why q is not zero so q is not zero because in mathematics when the denominator of any number is zero that is not defined in mathematics okay the, this condition we will always avoid from now just keep in mind that denominator of any expression any number should not be zero in mathematics that is not acceptable in mathematics okay denominator can't be zero which means not defined, which means it is not defined in mathematics, okay? So not only for this number, even in when you will go in higher class and when you, we will be having expression like this, x square plus x minus one over x minus one. So there also we will talk about that this denominator should not be zero. X 
value one, which is making the denominator zero, we are not going to accept that because that value is making the denominator zero. So just to idea that denominator in mathematics, it can't be zero, not only for the numbers anywhere. It can't be zero. That is not defined in mathematics. That's why when we are talking about the definition of the rational number, we are saying that denominator should not be zero. From here, we are starting the discussion and it will just keep on going. Okay. Now, irrational number, this chapter we are going to hear a real number, right? So, irrational number introduction is there in this chapter. Ir rational number. So everything is everything is real number. Okay. Real, rational number are real number. Integers are real number. Whole numbers are real number. Rational number which is left behind. There is irrational number which is not attached to anyone. Okay. Irrational number is somewhere here called irrational. Okay, so real number contains, now again I'm going to repeat the same sentence that real number contains rational number, yes. Real number contains integer, yes. Real number contains whole number, yes. Real number contains natural number, yes. Real number contains irrational number, yes. So these all are the sequence of the numbers. Irrational number is not attached to any of the number. Okay. So this is the sequence we are having. Now you must be thinking, okay, we understand what is rational number. We understand what is integer. We understand what is whole number. We understand what is natural number. But what about irrational number? What is irrational number? So irrational numbers, now only we will be having a discussion related to that. When we are talking about decimal number, decimal number are of two types. Decimal numbers are of two types. One is terminating decimal. Another is non-terminating decimal. The decimal number which you have always seen, uh, 0 0.25, 3.25, 6.792, 8.352, these numbers, decimal numbers are of two types. One is terminating decimal, another is non-terminating decimal. What is terminating decimal number? Here, focus on the name, termination. Termination means a stoppage, okay? So, terminating decimal number is the same thing. If I am talking about example of terminating decimal number, it can be 3.25. Or another example, if I am taking for terminating decimal number, it can be 8.753. Or another example of terminating decimal number is maybe 8.12345. Okay, so what we are getting from terminating decimal number after a certain digit, there is a decimal and after decimal, there are certain digits. And after certain number of digits, it is getting stopped. There is a termination over there. There is a stoppage. Okay. There is a stoppage. It just got stopped. It just got stopped after five. Okay. It just stopped after five over here. You can see the example. And what about non-terminating decimal number? Non-terminating means not stopping. It is not getting stopped. So it will keep on going, keep on going, keep on going and keep on going. So the example of non-terminating decimal can be 0 0.33333333333333. It will just keep on going. Those are the example of non-terminating decimal number. Okay. 
okay so decimal numbers are of two type terminating non terminating now only we will just summarize our uh, everything the concept and we will uh, uh, discuss what is rational what is irrational just a second now uh, uh, non terminating decimal numbers are of two types okay non terminating when we are having 0.3333 this is one of the example of non terminating decimal and the other example of non terminating decimal number 5 2 3 3 7 8 okay so you can just a second so you can see here in the example only that in the first example there is a number 3 which is just keep on repeating 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 it is just the number is continuously the number is getting repeated okay or if i will take one of the example as a 0.25 25 25 25 25 25 so there is a repetition of the number okay in this three example we are able to catch the concept that in the first two numbers in the first two example in the first two which we have written uh, for the first one and the second one we can see the first one num two digits are there after the decimal which is just getting repeated 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 the next one 3 3 3 3 it is getting repeated okay and the last one if you will look at the example 2.3523871563789 oh my god the random numbers are keep on coming okay here there is no repetition yeah the digits is getting repeated of course it will get repeated but we are not able to find a pattern here no pattern is there okay so that's why we are saying that non terminating decimal number can be of two type one repetition will be there another one no repetition will be there a random numbers random digit will keep on coming keep on coming and keep on coming okay so now i am going to write it that one of the type for non terminating decimal fraction uh, decimal number is recurring recurring decimal another is non recurring decimal the word recurring means repeating recurring means reoccurring 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 repeating repeating and repeating that's what the meaning of recurring is there non recurring means non repeating okay so recurring example of recurring if i will take from the above example if we will take it this example 0.252525 which we can write it as a 0.25 and bar on the head or maybe 0.25 dot on the head of 2 and 5 that means these two digits are repeating itself okay another example which we have taken for non terminating decimal number is another example is 2.8 0.33 we have taken no 0.3 and bar on the head or maybe dot on the head this two signifies the same thing okay these are called re recurring decimal the proper name for this this one is non terminating recurring decimal and for the other one non terminating non recurring decimal example is the same example i will just copy paste from the above one that is 2.35238711563 that means it is non terminating there is no stoppage at all it is not getting stopped okay 
So Ma'am, now we can example. summarize everything. Yeah, what? Ma'am, pi is also an example, right? Pi is also an example of non-terminating, non-recurring. Pi is also an example of non-terminating, non-recurring decimal number. And yes, all the square roots numbers are also example. We will be discussing about that. Okay. Pi is an example. If if any of you are thinking that pi means 22 by 7, why we are saying that it is non-terminating? So pi is pi is 22 by 7 that is just the approximately it is 22 by 7 but in actual pi value when you will search it is 3.14 and a random numbers will keep on coming keep on coming and keep on coming we are taking 22 by 7 to make the calculation simple but it is not exactly 22 by 7 it is it is non-terminating non-recurring decimal number non-recurring means the numbers the pattern you will not find any pattern over there all right let's summarize everything decimal numbers are of two type we can understand one one of the type is after a certain digit it will just get stopped so prices and everything which see, which we see on the tax like the prices rupees maybe 1000 1000 0.25 0 0.89 0 0.23 so these are the example of terminating decimal number what about non-terminating decimal number non-terminating decimal numbers example can be if the same number is repeating itself or that is like non-terminating decimal number means there is no stoppage first of all there is no stoppage at all it is not stopping it is just continuing and continuing and continuing now since it is not stopping there are two different possibility one of the possibility is there will be a repetition of certain digit okay that's called recurring reoccurring certain digit will reoccur again and again again and again and another one is non-recurring where no digit will reoccur okay pi is also one of the example of non-terminating decimal number and all the square roots number which which is not a perfect square if i'm talking about square root of 2 or maybe square root of 3 or maybe square root of 5 not 4 okay 4 means we will be able to take it out 2 as a result if we are having a square root of 4 we know the answer will be 2 okay if if there is a number which is not a perfect square just like 2 just like 3 just like 5 7 8 these number are also non-terminating non-recurring okay recurring word you can replace this recurring word with repeating also it's the same thing okay repeating decimal and that is non-repeating decimal number all right i am saying that these square roots number that is root 2 root 3 root 5 root 7 root 8 these are also when we will find the value we know how to find the value of a square root number right long division method is known to you yes or no yes ma'am yes, it is ma known to you let's see suppose i am taking two okay let's find the square root of that so only two is there the square root of two we want to find long division method you already know first of all we will be taking one one times one that is this okay now whatever we have taken here we need to take here and the result is 2 here 2 minus 1 is 1 only now we must write some something over here something over here and we'll, we don't have any number so decimal number is square root do you know how to find the square root while using the decimals and all was it there Decimals no, no, was there. Yes, ma'am. Decimals was there. It was there. So we will be taking one decimal and that decimal will give two zeros for free. Okay. Now, now we can understand that we can take something. What should be done after that? Can you tell me? We must take a number over here. Maybe 4, maybe 5, maybe 6, maybe 7, maybe 8. So that this 100 will be divisible. 
okay so we must be taking something beside 2 and will multiply with the same number and so full. that this 100 must be divisible okay and so we how, need to take 4 yeah 4 how we will identify that 2 is there and 100 is there just start counting the table of 2 2 1 times 2 2 2 times 4 okay 2 5 times 10 so maybe we need to check with 5 Okay, if 5 is working well and good, if 5 is not working, we need to check for the previous number. If we will check with 5, 5, 5 times 25, 5 carry 2, 5, 2 times 10, 11, 12, we are getting 125. What we are having in hand, only 100. So we cannot take 5, we need to take 4. Let's check with 4 also. Okay, 4, 4 times 16, 6 carry 1, 4, 2 times 8, 1, 9. So when we are taking 4, we are getting 96. What we are having in hand, 100. So, 4 we can take. 4 we can take over here. Okay. okay. Here also, 4 we will be taking. That is giving us this. 100 minus 96 is. 100 minus 96 is 4. 4, 4, 8 and 2. Again, what we will do? The decimal, the same decimal will give. 0 at a time okay so it will give 2 0 at a time now again we will be repeating the same process what should be written beside 2 8 so that 400 will be divisible so 2 2 times 4 so we need to check with 2 so if 282 we will multiply with 2 2 2 times 4 8 2 times 16 6 carry 1 2 2 times 4 1 5 564 we are getting and what we are having in hand just 400 that means one time only we it will go it will just go one time that is 281 one, uh, 10 minus 1 9 here 9 minus 8 1 are we getting 119? Check it. Yes, ma'am. Is it 119? Yes, ma'am. Now, one we need to copy paste over here. Again, we will be adding one. One, two, eight. So, again, we need zero. One decimal will give two zero at a time. Just a moment. It is going to get stopped. Wait, let me share my screen again. Just a second. So, what shall be taken over here? Yeah. So, 282 we are having and 11900 we are having. Again, we will be just checking with the first digit over here and first digit over there. That is not possible. To two digit we will take from there and we will check. 2, 5 times 10, 2, 6 times 12. So, maybe we need to start checking from 5. So, 2, 8, 2, 5, we will be checking. Okay? If we will do by 5, 5 times 25, 5, carry 2, 5, 2 times 10, 11, 4, 5, 2 times 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, we are getting 1, 4, 1, 2, 5. Is it going? No. Because we are having 1, 1, 9, 0, 1, 11, we are having 14, we are getting here. So, it will not go. Okay? Now, we need to take by 4. So basically here, what I'm trying to show that it will just keep on going. 1.414 or random numbers, the digits will keep on coming and keep on coming. If you want to check here also, we will be getting one or what? If we will be getting one, is it following a pattern after the decimal 414141? If you want to check that, please check. Okay, here we will be taking four. 
four we will be taking because it will go by four. Okay. Let's do that. Four four times sixteen. Six carry one. Four two times eight nine. Eight four times thirty two. Two carry three. Four two times eight nine ten eleven. We are getting one one two nine six. You can see clearly it is divisible. Okay. Let's do the subtraction. So ten minus six is four. Ten minus six is four. Here we are having nine minus nine zero. Here we are having eight minus two six six zero four. We are getting here and here four four eight two eight two eight. Again two zero we will get from the same decimal. Okay. Now how many times it will go? Two eight two eight is there. If we will check the first digit and first digit, we are getting the idea that two three times six. So maybe it will go three times or maybe two times. If we will check three times, three three times nine eight three times twenty four four carry two three two times six seven eight eight three times twenty four four carry two three two times six seven eight. We are getting eight four eight four. We don't have eight four. We have we have a number six. The first digit. First number is six over here, so basically we need to take two over here and two over here, and in the quotient part also two. Okay, check it. Two two times four, eight two times sixteen six carry one. Two two times four one five, eight two times sixteen six carry one. Two two times four one five. So you can see it is divisible. Okay, we we are having six zero four zero zero. Here we are getting five six five six four. So yes, it is divisible. So you can see our pattern got like we are not getting the pattern four one four one type of pattern. We are not getting, and we will not get a pattern over here. It will just keep on going, keep on going. You will just if even if I will just fill the whole screen, will going down and down and down. It the numbers will just keep on. Just coming and coming and coming and coming without any repetition. That's why we say, that's why we say that non-terminating, non-repeating decimal numbers. Example is root two, root three, root five. So these are the numbers which will always, when you will find the square root, it will give a decimal number which will not follow any pattern at all, and it will not get a stop at all. Okay, now. rational number irrational number so terminating decimal numbers are example of rational number any decimal number which is just getting a stop that is rational number rational means p by q form okay if you will take any p by q form number maybe 2 by 5 you can divide it please do the division and check it So five point four times twenty. So when we have taken a rational number by ourselves, two by five. When we have taken a rational number by ourselves, and when we are just converting it in decimal, we can see the decimal is coming as a zero point four. Zero point four is terminating decimal. Okay, terminating means after a certain digit, it will just get stopped. Okay, so. All the terminating decimals are rational number. From here only we can take the conclusion that all the terminating decimal numbers are rational numbers. What about non-terminating? All the non-terminating are rational? No. Or oh, non-terminating is having two types: recurring, non-recurring. Recurring are rational number. non recurring are irrational number okay so decimal numbers are of two types terminating non terminating terminating decimal number is called rational number okay whenever you will take any rational number you have also learned this type of concept have you learned tell me uh, if you not 4.5 can be written as 45 by 10 can be right yes sir so we know this this concept you have learned in the like lower classes only and we are saying that we are saying that this is rational and hence this is also rational so if 
terminating decimal number you will see terminating decimal anywhere you can see just you can make the conclusion terminating decimal okay it's a rational number okay and if you will see non terminating decimal just look at the pattern carefully is it repeating or non repeating if it is repeating decimal then it is also a rational number so maybe or may not be you have learned this concept also that when we are having 0.0 Zero point three five and bar on the head. We can write it as a thirty five over ninety nine. Have you seen this type of cases? Yes, ma'am. So that's why here also we are able to represent it in the form of p by q, and that's why we are saying this is also rational. So this is also rational. So when we are Having terminating decimal number that is rational number. When we are having non-terminating decimal number, if it is repeating, that's called rational number. If it is non-repeating, non-terminating, non-repeating, that's called irrational number. What are the example of irrational number? Example of irrational numbers are i root two. Root three, root two. We have we were finding just now to show you the example that when you will do the long division method, you will just keep on doing, keep on doing. Your whole copy will finish and the division will not stop. Okay, and there will be no pattern. All right, root three, root five, root six, root seven. All the number which you cannot take it out from the square root sign. Those are irrational number because when we will go to convert it in decimal form. That pattern, non-terminating, non-repeating pattern, we will get. If you want to check the value of pi, let me show you so that it will get registered in your mind. That whenever we will be getting a fill in the blanks or something, you can say that pi is not twenty-two by seven. Twenty-two by seven is just the approximated value. Mathematician says, okay, you are facing problem while doing the calculation with pi. Take it as a twenty-two by seven, but that is just approximated value. The real value of pi. Let me show you. Just a moment. Can you see my screen? Can you see? Yes, ma'am. Here you can you see the yes, approximate value of pi is calculated to be three point one four one five nine two six five dot 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 means keep on going, and it is an irrational number because here you can see one four one five nine two six five. If we have taken this much of digits, there is no repetition, no pattern is there. If you are thinking about the number one is repeating, or maybe another number. Is getting repeated. We are not talking about number. We are having just few numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Obviously, there will be repetition of number, but pattern we are not getting. Like like two five two five two five two five. This type of pattern, or maybe one four one again one four one again one four one again one four one. This type of pattern we are not getting. Okay, certain digits are not reoccurring again and again. That's why it is falling in the category of irrational number, and irrational number means non-terminating, non-recurring. Okay, pi is 
irrational number. 22 by 7 is just the approximated value. So these are irrational number. Now let's solve your question from here. Now finding rational number in between two rational numbers. So suppose find first I'm saying three. Three rational number between one and two. Okay, when we are having a number line, one is there, zero is there, then one is there and two is there. In between one and two, infinite number of decimal numbers are there. We just need three rational number. Okay, three rational number, if we have to find, there are two ways. Let's see what are the ways. So the first way is, since we want to find number any number in between 1 and 2. So the first method is take this point, take this point, take this point, add them and divide it by 2. You will get the middle one. This is the formula for finding the middle number. A plus B by 2 is the formula in mathematics to find the middle number. Not only the middle number in between 1 and 2, it will give you middle number of any two number. Okay, so 2 plus 1, 3 by 2, 3 by 2 means, if you will convert it in decimal, you can see 3 by 2 means 1.5. So it will always give the middle number. Keep in mind, this is the formula for finding the middle number, not only in this chapter, anywhere for finding exact middle number, this formula only we will be using the first, like one of the end plus another end's number divided by 2. If you want to check, Please check it. Here we are having 4. Here we are having 6. If I want to find the middle number by using the formula, the formula says take one of the number from this end and take the other end number, add both of them and divide by 2. 6 plus 4 is 10. By 2, we are getting 5. And yes, we know in reality, okay, that in between 4 and 6, 5 comes. So A plus B by 2 is the formula for finding the middle number. Not only here, everywhere in the mathematics. This type of formula you will say, where teacher will say you that A plus B by 2 or X1 plus X2 by 2 is the formula for finding the middle point, middle number. So this formula only we are going to use over here also. Okay. So when we are taking A plus B by 2, we got a middle number or the midpoint. That is 3 by 2 we got. I am writing it in terms of fraction only. Okay. So one of the rational number in between 1 and 2 we got 3 by 2. Now we need to find 3 rational number. So we are having this, this much of in, information in hand. We are having this much of data in hand. This much. One of the end point is 1. Another end point is 2. And the mid one we know 3 by 2. Now we can also find the mid point we can also find the midpoint of 1 and 3 by 2. This 3 by 2 and 1, this 2's midpoint we can find. Let me write it properly. So we are saying that we are saying that a number 1 is there, another number 2 is there. In between that we have found 3 by 2 is there. We need three numbers in between one and two. Okay, three rational number. Now again, we can apply the midpoint formula for for this two, for this one and this one. What the formula says, take the first, like one of the end number, then add it with another end, divide by two. Here the calculation will be like, we have to do the calculation carefully, but we will get the middle number. How? Let's do the calculation. In the numerator, the LCM will be, in the numerator, the LCM will be 2. Okay, we will be getting 2 plus 3 in the numerator. Denominator is 2, still 2. Alright, in numerator, we are getting 5 by 2 and the denominator is 2. That means 5 by 2 is divided by the denominator's 2. 
okay we know this division in fraction chapter you must have learned that this division we can convert it in multiplication by taking the reciprocal of very next number okay so reciprocal of 2 will be 1 by 2 okay so we are able to do the calculation and we got 5 by 4 so in between in 1 and 3 by 2 exact between there okay 5 so find same way the number in between 3 by 2 and 2 so 3 by 2 plus 2 a plus b by to do that is the numerator will be 3 plus 4 that is 7 divided by 2 and the denominator is still 2 we don't know how to solve this we can apply the concept of division we can say 7 by 2 divided by 2 that means 7 by 2 into 1 by 2 so we got 7 by 4 in between 1 and 2 we got three numbers okay this is the lengthy way of finding it in between 1 and 2 we got three number one is 5 by 4 another is 3 by 2 another is 7 by 4 5 by 4 3 by 2 7 by 4 these are three rational number 5 by 4 3 by 2 7 by 4 these are three rational number which we have found in between 1 and 2 by using the midpoint formula that is a plus b by 2 okay there is one easier way of doing it we just need any three number find three three rational number in between 1 and 2 in between 1 and 2 infinite numbers are there okay infinite decimal numbers are there so among that infinite decimal number any three any three we have to find the your answer your friend's answer like your other friend's answer everyone's answer will be different over there here and that is fine because in between 1 and 2 we have to find any two any three rational number in between 1 and 2 infinite decimal numbers are there among that infinite decimal number if you are just picking the first three another one is picking the other three that is fine just it has to be in between 1 and 2 so there is other way also of doing that and the other way is there just a moment no okay so the other way is there which is a quicker way of doing it and what the other way says we have to find rational number three rational number in between 1 and 2 that means we will take 3 plus 1 we will take 3 plus 1 and make the denominator of like both 1 and 2 we will convert it in equivalent fraction like this 1 is there and 2 is there okay Three rational number we want. That means we will be doing three plus one, four. One extra we need to take. Okay, in the denominator. Here I'll be taking four. Here I'll be taking four. Okay. Now equivalent fraction we are converting. If you are not understanding, this is one can be written as one by one. Two can be written as two by one. Okay. And this type of fill in the blanks you have done in the previous like lower classes. If there is a box like this. if there is a box like this can you tell me what shall what should be there in the first box here here one became four then this one will also become four yeah here one became four then this two will become yeah two will become i am uh, the like the voice is not that clear can you please repeat i mean it would become uh eight it will become eight okay just a moment let me share it again
one became four, then two will become eight. If you are uh, still not uh, understanding, because it is just very basic concept. So we are multiplying one with four. So in the numerator also, we need to multiply the same number. Here we are multiplying the denominator with four. So in numerator also, we need to multiply the same number. So our number, which was one and two, now became four by four and eight by four. In between this two fraction, we need we need three fraction. We can say three fraction will be five by four, six by four, seven by four. Can you see we got easily three fractions? Five by four, six by four, and seven by four. I said to you that it is like if our previous answer and this answer is different, that is completely five. Fine. Okay. Here we are having seven by four. And here also we are having 7 by 4. There we are having 5 by 4. Here also we are having 5 by 4. 6 by 4, I believe if we will reduce it to lowest term, it will just get converted into 3 by 2 only, right? 6 by 4, 2, 3 times 6, 2, 2 times. So we got the same answer, 3 by 2, right? No need to do the conversion. No need to reduce it in fraction. We can say 5 by 4, 6 by 4 and 7 by 4 are the 3 rational number which is lying in between 1 and 2. 4 by 4 means 1. Keep in mind 8 by 4 means 2. Okay, let's repeat the process. Let's understand what we are doing here. Uh, wait. If we are having 3 by 5 and 4 by 5. All right. And if we have to write five rational number, one, two, three, four, five, five rational number, if we have to write in between this two rational number, then what we are doing, whatever, if five rational number we have to write, that means five plus one, six, six, we will take just a moment now. Today we are going to give the, you are going to give the assessment of terminating and non-terminating decimal number. Okay. So let's summarize that at first so that you can give the assessment. Rational number concept is there which we will be continuing. We are going to continue in the next class. All right. Few minutes we are having in hand. Let's finish all the question which is related to terminating and non-terminating decimal number. Just a second. Let's summarize this first. So we are having the first question as, is zero a rational number? We will be having a discussion about this one, how we will be doing this. First thing first, is zero a rational number? Yes, sir. 
No, ma'am. Yes or no? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Any number which we can write it in the form of p by q is a rational number where q must not be zero. Okay, zero we can write it as a zero by one. P can be zero, but q can't. Again, I would repeat, denominator can't be zero in mathematics. Okay, zero by one we can write the result. It will generate zero, and yes, zero is a rational number. Zero we can also write it as a zero by twenty-five. So we can say zero is a rational number. Now, if you will see your Venn diagram, Venn diagram, rational number in includes integer. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Whole number also includes yes, zero. So we are saying rational number contain integer also whole number also that means rational number contains zero also, okay? That is true. Can we write in form of p by q? Can we write zero in the form of p by q? Yes, we can write zero in the form of p by q. Q the denominator whatever we will take twenty five thirty five thirty two one hundred one thousand one crore whatever we will take in the denominator below zero the result will be zero only. So yes, we can represent it in the form of p by q. Zero by any number of of our choice we can take as a q, because we need the outcome will be zero again. Okay, it's a rational number. Rational number definition also says any number which can be written in the form of p by q, where p is an integer, q is an integer, but q must not be zero. The denominator can't be zero. All right, so. This one done. Now state true and false is there. Every natural number is a whole number. Every natural number is a whole number. Is it so? All the natural number are whole number. Every natural that. number is whole number. Uh, yes no or no? Is it true or false? It is true. All the natural number comes. Inside whole number, the statement is like this: every natural number, is whole number. And zero is also included in all. Zero is also included in all. Zero is also including in all. All you said or whole number you said. Um, a uh, whole numbers. Yes, zero is also included in whole number. But can I say that every natural number, every natural number one, two, three, four, five, six, all are whole number? Can I say? Can I? Yes, ma'am. Are you getting the idea yes, that sir. it is true? Now the next sentence is I am writing the sentence every integer. Is a whole number. Whenever you will see such a statement no? and if you are getting confused then is means you can replace this word is with you can replace this word is is with comes in or come inside whatever you want you can replace this is with that one okay now read it every natural number comes inside whole number see the venn diagram yes or no yes now every integer let me write is means comes inside is means come inside every integer come inside whole number whole number every integer come inside whole number we can see it is outside whole number yes or no yes or no yes sir so always keep in mind this venn diagram Every integer come inside whole number. No, it is outside whole number. 
so all the integers are not whole number the example of that is minus 1 is an integer but minus 1 is not whole number minus 3 is an integer but minus 3 is not whole number so all the negative numbers are integers but negative number we cannot take for whole number okay next one is next one is every rational number is a whole number every rational number every rational number is whole number is we can just replace with come inside so every rational number come inside whole number we can see in this diagram no okay all the rational numbers are not whole number whole number means like 0 1 2 3 4 rational number can be fractional number also and this 0 1 2 3 4 are also rational number okay so if rational number example we will take as a fractional number 2 by 5 this is not whole number okay just keep in mind this diagram like this first natural number then whole number then integer integer we represent by z okay z we represent we represent our integer by this z 